In this video, we'll talk about constraints in Relational Database Management System RDBMS. You will be learning about what is constraint, why we need the constraints in database, and different types of constraints in database. So I request you to please stay tuned till the end of this video. Please subscribe to my channel, like and share this video. Thank you. In this video, you will be learning about several different types of constraints created in Relational Database Management System RDBMS. So let's start. Every relation have constraints for having integrity and honesty in relationship. If you consider a human relationship to human to human or a relationship among different tables in an database. So every person or every entity who is involved in a relationship to share any data it is bounded with certain rules and regulations these rules and regulations are nothing but constrained why we are going to have the constraints to have the integrity of that particular data sharing or the to maintain the proper data we should have a constraints in the relationship so let's start constraints in database management system every relation has some conditions that must hold it to be valid in relation these conditions are called relational integrity constraints in database what is this relational integrity constraints see why we are going to have the constraints whenever one table is going to have a communication with another table for example i have a product table and a customer table customer wants to purchase a product so a purchase table will be created so with the help of this purchase table a database can communicate with a customer table a database can communicate with product table so this purchase table should maintain data so how to maintain the data we have a certain constraints so all these constraints we will be have we will be learning here in relational integrity constraints of a database so constraints enforce limits means rules it is going to impose or limits or instruction to the data or type of data to the data or type of data that can be inserted updated deleted from a table of a database whenever user wants to insert a new data into the table or update a existing data or delete or want to delete an existing data so the certain rules should be there so that data integrity should be there in the database of a table integrity constraint ensures that the data insertion updating and other process have to be performed in such a way that integrity is not affected integrity means the correctness of the data the correctness of the data should not be affected the whole and sole purpose of constraints in databases to not to affect the integrity of the data not to affect the integrity of the data so that's the reason we have the integrity constraints we have the integrity constraints the, the whole purpose of constraint is to maintain data integrity during an update delete and insertion of data into the table of a database so mainly there are three integrity constraints in database first key constraint which is focus on keys For keys are nothing but attributes domain constraints domain means on the attribute what type of values should be inserted what is the limit of that particular value referential integrity constraints it means how the two different tables or two or more different tables are communicating two or more tables are communicating or having a relationship in database so let's discuss in detail key constraints key constraints in one line if i ask you what is a key constraint key constraints are nothing but it is going to identify an entity within its entity set uniquely so whenever we are going to have a relationship among different tables a entity set will be created from that entity set key constraint is going to identify the unique entities so what is the entity what is the unique set we will be discussing in detail in coming 
slides domain constraints so what is a domain constraint validate set of values for an attribute what is an attribute attribute is a field in an table so to have the valid set of va valid set of values in an attribute the domain constraint is going to identify for example i have a age as an attribute in my table so what is the constraint i am going to apply age cannot be zero or age cannot be negative so this is a constraint i am applying on a particular attribute so this domain constraint will look after all these type of functionalities in a database next is relational integrity constraint so relational integrity constraint specify constraints between two tables so referential integrity constraints will define or will specify how different table will be communicating or will be having a relationship in a database so this is a key constraint which is going to identify entities within its entity set uniquely domain constraint validate set of values for an attribute referential integrity constraint specify constraints between two tables or two or more tables constraints in dbms first is key constraint there must be a candidate key for every relation which can identify a tuple uniquely what does it mean candidate key what is a candidate key i have created a detailed video on a candidate key you can check the description in the description i have provided the link go and learn the candidate key so candidate key in brief i will be telling candidate key will be having a primary key along with the alternate keys so we'll be seeing what is a candidate key here also if you want to learn more in detail about candidate key i have provided the link in the description you can check and learn this candidate key is called key constraint for that relation so candidate key is a combination of keys candidate key is not a one particular attribute or a key candidate key is a combination of keys so this candidate key is a key constraint whenever you are going to identify a identify candidate key in that relation so that is called as key constraint for that particular relation so key constraint are also referred as entity constraint key constraint is also referred as entity constraints an entity set can have multiple keys candidate key can also have the multiple keys so it means candidate key or the entity set can have multiple keys but out of which one key will be primary key so what is a candidate key candidate key is a combination of keys along with primary key so what are the different keys alternate keys the combination of alternate keys and primary key is a candidate key so an entity set can have multiple keys but out of which one key will be primary key this is mandatory this primary key contains a unique and not null value in the relational table so what is the functionality of a primary key primary key is a key which uniquely identifies each row in a table as well as it will make sure that there should be not null value or the null value should be there if we are not having any value in the table column or the specific field we should men mention null at least so primary key will ensure that not null value is there in the relationship table so what is a candidate candidate key or the key constraints let's see in an example so key constraint you have to identify in this relational table key constraint columns are i have given the blank here you have to tell the key constraints in the given relationship of two tables so i have a customer table i have a product table these two tables the primary key of customer table is customer id primary key of product table is product id so the primary keys are here customer id is a primary key of customer table product id is a primary key of product table here i have the relational table relational table i have is customer id customer name product id product name product price so this is my relational table the name of the table is purchase table so in this table customer id is a primary key whereas product id is a foreign key product id is a foreign key so tell me what is a key constraint or the candidate key of this relational table purchase table the candidate key is customer id and product id 
is a candidate key is a candidate key so key constraint columns are customer id and product id these are also called as candidate key of this relational table purchase table so here we have the relational table is purchase table in this purchase table what is a candidate key customer id and product id so this customer id and product id is a key constraint in this purchase table relation in this purchase table relation next we have the domain constraint domain constraint can be identified or the defines this valid set of values for an attribute valid set of values i have given the example a person cannot have the age in negative value or the zero minimum one day age will be there for any person so like this age cannot be zero or negative so valid set of attribute valid set of value should be there for every attribute so who is going to define this domain constraint is going to take the rest domain contain domain constraint will take the responsibility to make sure whatever the value we are going to enter into a specific field it is a valid it is a valid data we are going to insert this valid set is a data type of that attribute so data type means for example age you have to fill the age starting with one day it cannot be zero it cannot be negative if you are entering minus one so you will be getting an error one type of error another is data type error for example here age in the column you have to insert the age you are entering date so you will get an error so this domain constraint will look after for such type of errors in an at the time of insertion of a data into a database so this domain constraint will have the valid set of data types that a particular attribute should have the domain of an attribute includes string it can have a string value it can have a character value it can have an integer value time date currency etc so whatever the different type data types we have for a specific field all the data types will be there for every data type we can have the limitation or the constraint what sort of value or the range of particular values you are going to have in your particular field the value of an attribute must be available in corresponding domain only every attribute is bonded to have a specific range of values specific range of values for example if you are asking for a user to enter a mobile number the mobile number should not exceed 10 digit a mobile number should uh, should not contain uh, such as al alphabets a mobile number should have only numbers that number should be a positive numbers so all these type of things you have to apply in part on particular attributes so every part every every attribute is bounded to have specific range of values for example age cannot be less than zero and telephone number cannot contain digits outside zero to nine so these are the examples of our domain constraints so domain constraints will restrict the user for entering a wrong data into the database for restricting the user to for entering wrong data or incorrect data into a database so this is all about our domain constraint next we have the referential integrity constraint referential integrity constraint works on foreign key so on foreign key i have created a separate video on foreign key i have created a separate video you can find in the description go and check the video and learn the what is a foreign key in detail so here i will be telling about the referential integrity constraint so referential integrity constraint works on foreign key concept so the purpose of foreign keys is to maintain data integrity the purpose of foreign key is to maintain data integrity here we are telling about referential integrity constraint so referential integrity works on concept of foreign key so foreign key if we are applying then automatically we will be getting referential integrity key. so it is going to have the certain constraints on there how the how the data should be maintained in different two tables the purpose of foreign key is to maintain data in to maintain data integrity and allow navigation between two or more or different tables in a database referential integrity is specified on relationship between two or more tables referential integrity is nothing but a foreign key on foreign key we have if we have a certain restrictions or limits 
that is nothing but a constraint so referential integrity constraint is specified on relationship foreign key applies only on relationship between two tables so referential integrity constraint is specified on relationship between two or more tables in this referential integrity constraint if a foreign key in table 1 refers to primary key of table 2 foreign key in table 1 refers to the primary key of table 2 then every value of foreign key in table 1 must be null or be available in table 2 or be available in table 2 let's see the example over here differential integrity constraint here we are going to foreign key we are going to talk about foreign key a foreign key column that creates a relationship between two or more tables so let's see this example here customer table product table same example so in this i have the primary keys are customer id is a primary key of customer table product id is a primary key of product table I will be having a relational table is purchase table so relational table is a purchase table which is going to reflect the data of customer table as well as product table so here in purchase table I have the customer ID as a primary key and product ID as a foreign key product ID as a foreign key so the whatever the data I have in product ID is the same data what I have in product table what I have in product table the data in product ID of purchase table the data of product ID of product table is same is same okay so this type of integrity of the data the referential integrity constraint is going to have so this process is called as a referential integrity constraint referential integrity constraint so how we are achieving this with the help of primary key and foreign key concept we are achieving referential integrity constraint so this is all about our constraints in database so in coming videos i will be creating more in detail about different concept of database so please subscribe to my channel thank you please subscribe to my channel like and share my video thank you